Let Jane Austen be named the greatest artist that has ever written. She seems like a friend. I've been reading her books for 20 years. She's the foundation of uh, the modern Bridget Jones. The best Jones. novelist ever. She was just an amazing author, an amazing woman. A wonderful novelist. Who observed life. Every time I read Pride and Prejudice, I want to dig Jane Austen up from her grave and hit her over the head with her own shin bone. Jane Austen is famous for writing six great novels, but in fact, she wrote seven. Her very first novel, Lady Susan, remained hidden for decades and was nearly lost forever. The author infused it with all the insight and wit that make her famous, but also with broad hints of scandal and blistering irony. Why then does Lady Susan languish in obscurity? What secrets will the novel give up to one who knows how to read the adolescent mind? And who was the real Lady Susan? Jane Austen was a contemporary of revolutionaries and romantics, but in the same social milieu as the most important intellectuals of her time. And England is worried about revolution arriving across the channel from France to its own shores. So she was in a very interesting kind of an interstitial place in terms of a changing social fabric. The courtship plots that are almost always part of Jane Austen's fiction are invariably dramas about the social class. It's not ever just about love and marriage, but it's also about property and money. The 18th century was sort of interesting and transitional period. I mean, it was the, you know, the industrial revolution was going on. The middle class was, was emerging. And I think, you know, Jane Austen's novels um, show a, an ability to sort of uh, emerge from one class and move in, into another. Lady Susan follows the strategic machinations and power plays of a brilliant, witty woman in her mid-30s um, who is recently widowed. The characters are so wonderfully playable, you can act them. The actors, what they loved about this was the ability to, to use the language, to speak it, to say it, to utter it. The rise and fall of an adventuress in a very, very small world. It's called an epistolary novel. E-P-I-S-T-O-L-A-R-Y told in letters like St. Paul's epistle in the Bible. When you read a first person letter, it's almost impossible not to identify with the writer. With Lady Susan, there's a forced identification with a woman who is in many ways not very nice. Lady Susan is just kind of an evil person. She fits the archetype of a modern New York woman. She is enlightened, she is adventurous, she cares very little for the customs and mores and has her sights set northbound. She's quite a feisty woman. Uh, I wouldn't want her near my husband, that's for sure. <laughs> I have seen Lady Susan's younger sister uh, across many a table. Absolutely love Lady Susan. She is stimulating and exotic and manipulative and full of life. I think she was a sociopath because she does make her daughter miserable. She has a, a total amoral moral code. She's a liar, she's a manipulator, she's a home wrecker. She's a very nasty woman looking only out for herself and feeling no sense of guilt and, and a total hypocrite. She's one of the best written sociopaths I think I've read in a long time. Well, that's a tricky term. It's actually not a diagnosis. It's more of a, a code that it's someone who doesn't have the ability to think about anyone else's feelings, to have their own feelings. They usually are extraordinarily distant from what they feel. They pretty much think through their life. It's very cognitive how they operate, very devious, because they are invested in getting what they want at any price. In the story, she's presented as being exquisitely beautiful. What an attribute for a sociopath, and also what a setup for early trauma. I think it's kind of Jane Austen's comment on the difference in credibility or credulity between the sexes. 
she's intensely disliked by some very intelligent women. The men seem to be much more easily duped. From my character's perspective, the plot was, good Lord, what is this woman doing at my brother's house? I must go and see. Good Lord, she's fantastic. Oh my God, she's terrible. Oh, she's fantastic. Ah, all is revealed. She is cunning. She has her designs. And then she kind of gets her comeuppance, which is, you know, girls like me who watched those girls in junior high and high school and thought, ah, you know, I don't really like them, but I would really like them to like me, you know? <laughs> if you are unworldly or unsophisticated, you're no match for a sociopath at all. In writing letters, the characters show their most interior thoughts, so you really get to see how really quite evil, yet very interesting, Lady Susan is. Sociopaths are extraordinarily sad. They've had more loss than we will ever know about. I've heard uh, Lady Susan described as psychotic, a sociopath, a bit totally evil. Wait a second, Jane Austen doesn't spend the months it must have taken her to write this in fair hand, transport it with her for the rest of her life through their many, many moves if she thought she was writing about a sociopath. She obviously had a, an interest in this character and, and I, I, I think that what she saw in, in Lady Susan was a, a lover of words, a strong independent woman, a resourceful woman, and uh, and a woman who, who, who wanted to sort of shape her own destiny. She is, is sort of sexually independent, um, and she is, is practical. She knows she needs income. She's gonna, gonna go get it. Now, if, if those qualities were in a man, would you be calling him a sociopath? You'd be calling him normal. So why, why would you call Lady Susan uh, a sociopath? She's a woman in the circumstances of her time, and she wants more, so she's going to go for more, which, which I think is pretty amazing. What I see in her is strength, courage, incredible determination, and a will to survive at just about any cost. She is smart. She uses what she has to manipulate uh, the people around her in order to land safely on her feet. Marty and Stan have a feeling she was a bit before her time, quite a bit before her time. Men were turned off at that period in time by women who were smarter than they were, which is true even today. It's a good old boy's world and they don't like people like, you know, Hillary Clinton or Janet Reno or whoever you've got, you know, who have more brains than they do. Here, the focus is upon not the ingenue, but the older widow, uh, manipulative older woman. So for a 19-20-year-old uh, to write a novel about uh, a 35-year-old widow is quite extraordinary. How does an author get sociopathology so completely correct? It's not as though they had that diagnosis and she went to a hospital and just observed. How would she possibly know? Jane Austen wrote this novel arguably when she did because of the arrival of her cousin, Eliza. Her cousin Eliza was married to a count, a French count. She spent a lot of time in, in, in France. And, and you know, he was guillotined, uh, leave, leaving her a, a widow. She came back to England so that her child could be born on British soil, and so see, she could save her own pretty neck. <laughs> and she arrived in, uh, in Steventon, where Austen lived, at about the same time when Austen was writing this book. She flirted with both of Jane Austen's brothers, both of whom were younger than she was. And both James and Henry, Jane Austen's older brothers, fell in love with her. And both, at various times, proposed to her. She turned down James. Ultimately, she married Henry. Lady Susan, sort of flirting with two men at the same time is right out of Jane Austen's own experience watching Eliza and her two brothers. There's a good argument for her being the inspiration, although I wouldn't argue that it's 
a complete biographical portrait. This is fiction. It's art. We know that Jane and, and Eliza were very close. Jane tended her during her and her last days in her deathbed. Um, maybe she was nicer than Lady Susan. But Lady Susan is more interesting because she's not very nice. <laughs> she may have known a woman who was known for being a very mean mother. The repellent Mrs. Craven was an ancestor of the Austins who treated her five daughters with uncommon cruelty. She would alternately deprive them of food, then force them to eat things they found loathsome, all the while making them wait on her hand and foot. One by one, the daughters escaped their mother's clutches by marrying whomsoever they could as soon as she left home long enough for it to be arranged. She wrote what she saw and what she knew, but she also had the advantage of having read a lot, and um, she used that. By and large, it does seem that you get nothing or everything. There's not much in between. I thought I had read everything that she wrote, and I have big, thick, complete works of Jane Austen, which obviously somebody lied. Who knows what went on when she read her to Cassandra and to her family members, and they may have, who knows, they may have been saying, hey, Jane. <laughs> What are you doing there? Um, but we don't know. And I cannot presume to be a mind reader of Jane Austen. I respect her too much as a craftsperson to presume to say why she gave it away. But I, I, since you're asking me, I would think it made her uncomfortable. Producing a novel with her name on it that had a character such as Lady Susan in it that could be associated with her own views might have been just too dangerous. So I think Austen was very careful about being strategic with her public. And I think publishing Lady Susan may not have been a strategic move, and she knew that. Lady Susan herself has a great quote. It's about her not respecting women who have no thought to their own public appearance. Those women are inexcusable who forget what is due to themselves and the opinion of the world. Perhaps James Edward Austin Lee, when he included Lady Susan, didn't fully recognize him. I mean, he's in the high Victorian period when that second uh, volume, that second edition of the memoir comes out in 1871. And what a sociopathic type character because of when he's showing what his aunt wrote. And of course, that kind of goes against when we think about it with a more contemporary sensibility today. The aunt that he tries to write about is my gentle aunt, who never had an immoral thought, came up with a character like Lady Susan. You wonder if he even knew what he was doing there. Jane Austen, that many readers would like to imagine and cherish and are very protective of, is not always as sharp and delightfully wicked as the Jane Austen we see reflected in some of the texts is. She had a real, I love it, a real nasty streak in her. She has some extremely forthright and frank things to say in a private letter to her sister about uh, the social and sexual relations of the people of their acquaintance. Mrs. Hall of Sherborne was brought to bed yesterday of a dead child some weeks before she expected, owing to a fright. I suppose she happened unawares to look at her husband. Because of her one comment about not having any sympathy for a woman who miscarried, you get the feeling that she wasn't particularly fond of heterosexual women. And most of her books present women, except one, her, typically her main character, as being somewhat simplistic and naive. So I don't get a sense of Jane being able to have a sexual relationship with men. But my feeling is, is that she never married, never left that house, in order to keep that private. Poor woman. How can she be honestly breeding again? I would recommend to her and Mr. D the simple regimen of separate bedrooms read her letters, you see that Jane Austen was a realist about the world. And this is why I admire her so. She died very young at 41 and of, a, of what was of Addison's disease, which was at that time untreatable. Died too early. What would she have written if she could have lived another 20 years? My gosh, the mind boggles. It does indeed.
Not only can we not know what she might have written, but most of what she did write is gone. Within weeks of laying their beloved sister to rest, Cassandra and Henry Austin assembled and burned an estimated 3,000 letters written by her hand. A mere 153 survive today. For all her zeal to protect her sister's reputation, Cassandra somehow overlooked a quirky little novel in the epistolary form, chronicling the exploits of the beautiful, brilliant Lady Susan Vernon. Perhaps its very unworthiness is what saved it from the flames, and makes it today the only manuscript we have of a novel written in Jane Austen's hand. As scholars and readers in love with Jane Austen, we're horrified with Cassandra and wonder how she could do this. On the other hand, this was her closest friend in the world, who surely knew something about her sister's wishes and perhaps wanted to protect her sister. It's hard not to be invested in when we, we find the little tidbits of deliciousness about the Austen biography and want to know more. Human nature is always the same. That's what makes also Jane Austen's novels so lifelike and such classics. The language is just fabulous and we just it's just a really good time and it's and it's fun to laugh. A satirical work as many of your listeners will re realize because satire is st still so popular today just think of The Daily Show and The Colbert Report. The satirist cares that's because the satirist cares about what's happening in society sees the flaws and tries to correct those flaws. I've just learned to be a little more of a kind person think about other people and what they're doing and take into consideration their feelings. People are still falling in love, young people looking for the right partner in life and dealing with family matters and uh, it's exactly what Jane Austen writes about. So Jane Austen's wonderful on every level. Besides, he's my Mr. Darcy. <laughs> Doesn't everybody need a Mr. I Darcy? I can just life? be a Henry Tilney and she's my Eleanor. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm <laughs> Eleanor. <laughs>